This is the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter, one of the UK's best-selling large vans. And for most of 2019 and 2020, it's been engaged in an almost titanic struggle at the top of the charts with the Ford Transit large van. Now, it's clear from this vehicle that almost every facet of it has had Mercedes-Benz experience of creating luxury passenger cars poured into it. There's barely a facet that you won't find, the sort of trademark three-spoke luxury. So no further ado, let's crack it open and give this Mercedes-Benz Sprinter its very own Vanarama road test. Now before we get started, I sincerely hope you enjoy this video and if you do, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel and click the bell to get notified whenever we post new content just like this. And if you are in the market for a brand new van, car or pickup truck, don't forget to head to vanorama.com and check out the deals. Now, with no further ado, let's get started at the front where we always do. The front of the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter is, well, it's quite imposing. I mean, just check out the size of that Mercedes-Benz badge right in the middle of this black plastic grille. Whenever you see that logo, don't you just think sporty, luxury? And you, these are sort of words that you don't often associate with a van, but on this van, it certainly backs up the check that this badge writes. Now just underneath that badge is a step, and that step is a really useful addition. It means that if you've got any debris in these vents or in your windscreen wipers, you can just hop up using that as a step and you can reach everything within arm's length. Perfect. Now if you take a look at the headlights, they're actually a lot smaller than the previous version of the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter, which were actually the size of a large chopping board. These ones have been slimmed down, but they've been replaced with ultra-powerful bulbs so that you don't lose any of that visibility that the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter used to be so well known for. It's a really good looking vehicle and these headlights have these little sort of flicks at the end which make it look like it's wearing a little bit of eyeshadow. Well, with the front end done, let's have a look at the side because it's like a billboard. Now the side of the Sprinter is where you really get a sense of just how big it is. And at the progressive trim level, you get some steel wheels. Now progressive is the middle of the three trim levels you can choose. And as I said, you get those tough durable steel wheels as part of that package. You also get these nice tough heated door mirrors that are made out of that same durable black plastic. And you've got indicators on the side so people can see where you're going. Now from the front to the back of the vehicle, you also get this whole big swathe of black plastic, which is a big bumper, which obviously means that if someone opens their door a little bit aggressively onto your vehicle, hopefully most of the impact will be taken right there and not on your paintwork, which as you can see, there's an awful lot of metal here. Now, if I were you, and I got this vehicle on a lease and I wanted to show off my business to everyone. I mean, look at this, this is a billboard. You could have your logo on both of these panels, you could have it split over the panels, you could have all your details on the side. It's just absolutely massive. So there we go, that is the outside of this vehicle. Now I'm gonna show you where all of that luxury and all of that experience Mercedes has with building luxury passenger vehicles has been poured into this commercial vehicle. <sighs> It's a bit of a step up into the uh, Mercedes-Benz Sprinter, but once you're here, the cabin is just one of those places you feel right at home. Now, the first thing you notice is just how much storage there is in here. It is absolutely overflowing with cubby holes, overhead storage. There's even storage under the passenger seats right here, which just means that there's, if you've got anything you need to stash, you'll find somewhere. And if you can't, then you clearly are not looking hard enough. Okay, so comfort, first of all, very, very high. The driver's seat is a very nice ergonomic padded seat with these kind of wings on each side that keep you held in place very much like the front of a sports car. It's exactly what you'd expect to find in there. It's also got an armrest at the progressive trim level, which is really nice. It just slots easily into place with this kind of ratchet mechanism. It's a very nice addition, and actually you feel like a total gangster when you are driving around in the front of this vehicle. It's, uh, it's a very nice one to drive. Okay, so steering wheel. Well, you can tell that Mercedes-Benz has some experience with passenger cars because this feels like it's been taken out the front of a GLA or an E-Class or even the A-Class. It's a really nice, tough black plastic 
uh, steering wheel with controls on each side mounted on this really nice shiny black plastic which just looks luxury and there's all sorts of controls you've got your volume and phone controls even your voice control on one side and then you've got your speed limiter your cruise control just down here as well now there's no second stalk there's only one here and that's everything that's your indicators and your windscreen wipers on this left hand stalk right here it just means that well, you don't have to muck around with worrying about two stalks. You just got the one right here. It's very nice and very convenient. The dashboard instrumentation is also really clear. You've got your rev counter on the right hand side. You've got your speedo on the left hand side. And in the middle, you've got two driver information displays. Now, all your warning lights are on the top one. And in the middle on the bottom one, you've got everything like how many miles you've done, what your, your fuel consumption is, all the sort of usual stuff you'd expect to find. Tracking along the rest of the dashboard, you've no doubt noticed this imposing kind of control unit right here. Now, it looks like something from Sonos's uh, line of music systems, but actually what it is, you've got your infotainment display right here. You've got some controls right under here, but all of them are mirrored on your steering wheel. So you've got your volume control, power, skip, telephone, how to get hold of all the various things that are in Mercedes-Benz's user experience infotainment center, which to be fair, is one of the best on the market. It's very clear, very functional, and really, really slick. This screen is flanked as well by two very familiar vents. As I said, Mercedes-Benz have all that experience from their luxury cars. And of course, if the vents work in those, why wouldn't they work in the front of a commercial vehicle? So they've just put them in. You've got two either side of this screen. You've got two, one on the side for the passenger and one on the side for the driver as well. They just thought of everything. Now, either side underneath those, you've also got these nice little cubby holes, which are kind of rubberized, which means that if you shove some change or keys or you know, a lighter or something like that in there, it's not gonna go anywhere because of this nice rubberized little cubby hole. And I am someone who really likes things that are rubberized, but the least said about that, the better really. Uh, below that, you've got climate controls, which are again, nice and easy to stretch your hand out. So you've got your fan controls on one side, you've got your temperature on the other, and then in the middle right here, you've got your hazard lights. There's a lot of blank buttons, but as I said, that's because this is the middle trim level. Now, one thing to say about the Sprinter's trim levels is you've got your standard entry level, which you pretty much get everything you can see right here in anyway. At the progressive trim level, you get sort of other little accentations, usually on the outside and some comfort ones on the inside, but pretty much everything you'd get as standard is in this one right here. That's because this is a premium vehicle. They know that if you're gonna go for a Mercedes-Benz Sprinter, you wanna have all the toys. So they give them to you right off the bat. Now, up here, you've got this big console which hangs down in between the passengers and the driver. And this is covered with all sorts of light controls, but it's also where you press your button. If you get into trouble, you want to press SOS. You've got a button right here which puts you straight in contact with Mercedes-Benz pickup crew who will come and sort you out if you run into any trouble. Now, back to this center console. You've got your nice big gear stick mounted here. Very nice and easy and actually feels like it's been taken straight out of a car. It doesn't feel like it's been machined for this vehicle, but then Mercedes-Benz are good at doing gear sticks, so they've just whacked this one straight in here. To the left of that, you've got a nice bin, which because this is keyless entry and keyless stop start, that's a good place to stash your keys. And again, oh, it's got a slightly rubberized bottom. Oh, I love things that are rubberized. But anyway, as I said, they said about that, the better. Let's have a look at storage again. Okay, so in front of the driver, just over the top of your dashboard instrumentation, you've got two cup holders and a little cubby holder. Now, there's no real rubberization on there, so things will slip around, but to be fair, the cup holders are also a nice place to stash things like keys as well. In the middle, you've actually got a little pop button, which pops open a secret cubby hole. And who doesn't love a secret cubby hole? And at the back of that is something that you are gonna find very interesting. Now, phone charging and connecting your devices up to the infotainment system or just to get some charge on your mobile phone is something everyone wants to do. But instead of putting the old standard USB connectors, they've actually got a USB-C port. That's right, a USB-C. This is a vehicle of the future. The cubbyhole itself is quite nice and generous, and this one is rubberized. In front of the passengers, you've got almost a carbon copy of the little cubby hole and cup holders that you've got in front of the driver, which is great, which means there's four cup holders. You've only got three passengers at most, but you've got four cup holders, which means there's one to spare, which is brilliant. I don't know what you're gonna use the fourth one for, uh, but I always say bottle of water, maybe bottle of Lucozade, Gatorade, 
I don't know, there's <laughs> drinks. We're just listing drinks. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, there's no actual glove box really to speak of, and to be fair, I'm not really going to actually um, give Mercedes-Benz any hassle for that, considering how much storage there is elsewhere in this vehicle. Below it, you do get a nice little cubby hole, which is where they've shoved the manual, and inside that manual sort of folder that they've put together is also your locking wheel nut, which is always good to know where it is, just in case you get into any trouble. Both the passenger door and the driver door also have a wealth of storage. You've got enough room for a litre bottle of water in each one. And to be fair, you might be thinking, well, there are the doors that are bigger, that have got bigger storage. But again, I say overhead storage, cubby holes, cup holders, a little bit of door storage, and maybe a smaller couple of pouches on the doors. I think you can forgive it, especially when you see just how much room there is underneath this passenger seat right here. If I give it a tug, there we go, up it pops. You have so much room in here. You've basically got enough room for if you were smuggling shoes or shoe boxes around, you could probably fit about three to four boxes of shoes in each of these storage bins. Now, I'm not suggesting for a minute that you should start smuggling things because smuggling things is illegal. I think the overarching theme of the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter is technology. While I've spoken a lot about things like luxury, a touch of class, I think what actually epitomizes this vehicle is its use of technology and that it's in sensible places. Your infotainment screen is probably the most easy and obvious place to start. Not only can you connect your phone up, you've got DAB radio, you can also connect your devices up to it and use all sorts of things like Apple CarPlay or Android Auto to hook up a device and use it to stream audio, your sat nav, whatever you want to, straight to this screen right here. You've also got a comprehensive suite of vehicle settings from which you can change everything from how the display looks to how you can interact with it. You can even use voice control. Everything you'd expect from a modern smartphone is right here. And not only does it let you do all the kind of things like setting up a Wi-Fi hotspot, it also allows you to make subtle changes to the vehicle systems itself, including what lights come on when, how fast your wipers will move, all from this screen right here. It's Mercedes-Benz user experience infotainment system, and user experience coupled with technology is what Mercedes have absolutely nailed in this vehicle right here. So there we go. That is the cabin of the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter. Now, before we take it out for a test drive, I think the best place to go next is the loading bay. And even in the loading bay of the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter, it feels classy. Now, from the fiberboard floor, which is very tough and durable, which is kind of one of my phrases that I always spill out, to the ply lining, it just looks fantastic. It just looks really flexible and really practical. Even the ply lining doesn't just end. It's not just board, gap, board, gap, board, gap. It's board, and then it's got this black plastic fringing down the side of it, which just, I don't know, it just makes it feel uniform and quite plush. There's also tons of LED lighting. You've got an LED light here just above the rear space. You've got LED just as you come in, you've got LED halfway down, and you've got LED lights here as well for when you open the side sliding door. It's absolutely superb, and that it just doesn't stop there. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six lashing points down each side of the vehicle. You've got bungee points at this end and around the door as well to take advantage of. So if you have those large unwieldy loads that you need to secure down, you are not going to be found wanting you'll be able to find anywhere to lash up to. It's absolutely superb. It's also incredibly big, illustrated perfectly by the fact that I, as a five foot 11 man, am able to stand up without banging my head on the roof. It's really, really cool. But of course, one of the most important things about the back end of a large van is the dimensions. So check them out. Here they are on the screen. Check out the width between those wheel arches. Check out the maximum width the maximum height and also the maximum length. And don't forget to check out that payload rating as well, which while it may not be class leading, is still absolutely ample for the day-to-day -day needs of anyone driving a large van in the UK today. So there you go, there's all the sizings for the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter range. Before we go out and take it for a test drive, I just wanna show you the side sliding doors because they have something very cool that I want to point out. Now, at first glance, it doesn't seem like there's anything different about the side sliding door of a Mercedes-Benz Sprinter, and to be fair, there's not. But I want to point out that not only 
from the back will you be able to get Euro pallets into this vehicle, but this door is absolutely wide enough and high enough for you to be able to get a Euro pallet piled up with stuff in from the side as well. And that is just convenience that you expect from a large van. So all I'm doing is pointing out something that you kind of expect a large van to do anyway, and it can. So there you go, job done. We've done the loading bay, we've done the cabin, and we've done the externals. Let's get this vehicle cracked open on the road for its very own road test. You know what, I don't think I've ever been in a Mercedes-Benz Sprinter when it's not been raining. There seems to be just something that happens to me when I'm in the front of a Mercedes-Benz Sprinter. The clouds suddenly come pouring in, the sky turns grey, and uh, yeah, suddenly the heavens open and there you go. Get absolutely puffed down on by the clouds. But I tell you what, even the weather can't spoil that feeling of driving a Mercedes-Benz. No siree. It's raining, it's pouring. The audience is snoring. Underneath the bonnet of the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter is a two litre turbo diesel engine. Now it comes in a variety of power outputs. This particular one is the 314 model and it provides ample power, ample pulling power, and also allows you to get that really nice payload. It's a very easy vehicle to drive. The uh, Mercedes-Benz interiors are always really good, and it's a very nice place to spend time. As I'm driving along the road, even though it's absolutely pelting me with rain, I feel very safe, very snug. It's funnily one of those interiors that even though it is absolutely massive, it's actually quite squat in terms of how much room you have, but not in a bad way. It makes you feel snug and encased and enclosed, and that's never a bad thing. You always want to feel safe when you're driving a vehicle of this size. I think also it kind of tricks you into thinking you're driving a vehicle that's smaller than it is. Because you feel so close to this massive windscreen, you get to take in everything that you can see in front of you, and you never feel like it's particularly that big. Even going round a roundabout, I haven't yet clonked my back wheels going a little bit too tight. And I guess, I don't know, maybe Mercedes-Benz have done something, you know, maybe it releases some kind of chemical or the dashboard has been treated with some kind of chemical that makes you feel like you're driving a sports car when really you're driving a massive large panel van. I don't know how they do it. It must be the chemicals. Not that I'm saying that they're trying to drug you or anything like that. If I had to quibble about anything, with the drive of the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter is that the gear stick is, is heavy without actually being a particularly difficult to use gear stick. It does feel like you have to push the gear stick around to get it into gear. Now, it's a very, very minor quibble, and to be fair, I only really notice it at lower gears. I have a sort of a slight kind of muscle pain in the top of my left arm from just kind of shonking it into position, but. To be quite honest, that's something that I don't think everyone's going to experience. And like I said, it's not even a deal breaker. This is still a great vehicle, even if the gear stick does feel a little bit heavy. And that's primarily because of how responsive the gearbox is. You drop it down a gear, and there's a nice surge of power from that two litre diesel engine. And it just feels like it's gonna give and give and give and give until eventually you, you know, whack it up another gear and that power just fades away. And what it replaces it with is this very nice, smooth drive. It's one of the things I have to say that Mercedes-Benz really nail, whether it's in a passenger car or a commercial vehicle, the drive quality is always very, very smooth, even on bumpy roads. I tell you what, with a vehicle this big, the one thing that would improve it, the one thing would be a heads up display because you see heads-up displays in other vans, even in vans of different sizes, like the Toyota Pro Ace, at some of the higher trim levels, you get a heads-up display which shows the current road speed limit and what speed you are going at at the time. Now, I find that really useful, and to be fair, I would imagine that on a larger van it to be even more useful. Because you've got such a big windscreen with such excellent visibility, when you want to actually check your speed, it's quite a noticeable motion that you have to go through. You really have to look down to see the speed. Now, you don't have to just check the speedometer. You can actually check the driver information display in the middle right here, because that's showing a digital readout of the speedo. But it is that motion. It's having to look down to check my speed. 
It's quite a big transitionary movement, which does make me feel like I've taken my eyes off the road, maybe for just a little bit longer than I would usually feel comfortable about. But a heads up display isn't really something that I'm going to uh, quibble too much about. At the end of the day, you often, driving vehicles like this, get a sense for the speed you're going. Moseying down country roads is always the most exciting thing when you're driving a large van. Because you always think to yourself, am I going to clonk the top of the vehicle on branches or any overhanging into the road kind of foliage? But luckily I haven't actually done that yet, although the road is beginning to tighten up. So if you hear any clonks and bonks, don't worry Mercedes, your vehicle will be returned to you in absolute pristine condition. Um, it wasn't me, it was someone else. Well, I've got to say, taking this vehicle out on the road makes you feel great, actually. As large vans go, it doesn't feel like you're riding in a large van. It doesn't feel like you're driving a large van. The engine's responsive, powerful. It makes you feel like you're riding in a car. As I said, Mercedes-Benz have done an incredible job of making such a large vehicle feel like such a small one to drive. Its handling is excellent. Its gear changes are nice and smooth. There's plenty of torque from the engine. The gear ratios feel dead on, absolutely dead on. When you slot down into third gear, just for that little bit of boost of power, absolutely perfect. I've got to say, it's one of the nicest interiors as well to sit in. I mean, it's just wonderful, and the technology at your fingertips is just brilliant. Making use of all sorts of things like Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, even voice control, and the inbuilt MBUX system is just really, really well thought out. Mercedes-Benz have done, in my opinion, a smashing job. So, well, I guess we're just sort of rearing up to the conclusion, really. And as a great man will say in just a few moments, how do we finish this one? So, how do we finish this one? Well, in my opinion, whoever said you can't have luxury and a touch of class in a commercial vehicle has been proved completely wrong by the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter. All of that experience Mercedes has built up by building passenger vehicles with all that luxury and class has been translated and pulled across and poured into this vehicle right here. And if that's what you're looking for in your next van, then this is the one for you.